Now I will talk about DC and AC circuits. DC stands for direct current and AC for alternating current. Now the battery on top is my DC source and the wall outlet, well, it will be my AC source. When I close the switch for the battery circuit, electrons represented by arrows start flowing in one and only one direction. That's, that's the key with direct current. So as long as the switch stays closed, the electrons will continue flowing the same direction. Now the bottom one, the story is different. When the switch is closed, you see that the electrons uh, starts going back and forth. So they are alternating on the uh, direction of movement. As a matter of fact, this light is flickering at a rate of 120 times per second. Yes, electrons go back and forth and the light will be flickering, but you won't be able to see it. That is what AC is. Electromagnetic principle to create power, you need three components, a magnet, a conductor, and motion between these two. So large generators, they do have magnets, they do have conductors, and uh, well, they are designed, the conductors are designed to rotate so that they go, they cut through the magnetic lines of flux that come from the magnets. This is how they generate power. To better represent how the sine wave gets affected by the current flow on the electrical circuit, I created this animation. The arrows represent current flow, the thicker arrows, that means current is flowing stronger, and when you get to the highest point, the wave on the right side reaches its uh, peak value, and this one is the positive side. Then it starts, uh, current starts decreasing to get to a point of no flow. A current reverses flow and eventually reaches a maximum negative side in the wave side and it continues to get to uh, what is a, a point of no flow on the opposite side. That is what's called one cycle. And these cycles keep happening over and over over a period of a second to be a total of 60 cycles per second. way to explain the AC way is using this uh, silly generator where we got our North Pole, our South Pole, lines of fluxes go from North to South and our single conductor generator which is starts at zero where it is cutting zero lines of flux therefore uh, not producing any power but as it travels 90 degrees in the clockwise direction now is illustration B uh, notice that uh, on red the la the sine wave it is all the way at the peak maximum value because on B you see that the conductor is actually crossing the maximum amount of flux then if it continues now it travels to C which is a uh, 180 degrees and it is out of the lines of flux so therefore our sine wave is back down to zero and it will continue now there is a reversal of flow because um, our, our wire, the one that we are paying attention to now is close to the, ne to, to the North Pole. And in the sine wave, we have reached our maximum lowest peak value of current flow. The next uh, 90 degrees is gonna take us back down to a starting point where there is no current flow and our sine wave is indicating that there is no current flow. An AC power, power constantly flows in one direction and it comes back in the other direction and so on and so forth. So I'm going to talk about the electromagnetism principle and that's what it is. is uh, uh, we use magnets and we use uh, motion and we use a conductor, the three elements that we need to create power. So we're going to pretend that this is a magnet and we got a North Pole and a South Pole. Flux always flows from the North Pole to the South Pole. That's how, that's how flux works. Now, this is my uh, single loop generator pole, and it's gonna rotate, well, in that direction, clockwise direction. Now, here, at this point, it's very important because in here, on the left side, the conductor is going up, but at the right side, the conductor is going down. That's very important because I'm gonna talk about a 
uh, something called the uh, left hand rule for generators. Left hand rule for generators is uh, notice that I have I put this at 90 degrees, and we we say something silly like "Mom's fried chicken." Yeah, that's right, "Mom's fried chicken." This M stands for motion, motion of the conductor. This for the flux, the flux of the magnets, and this for the current movement within the conductor. So. I did say that on the left side, the, the wire was going up. As is, the lines of flux are going that way, the, this, K, this wire is crossing those lines of flux. As it's closing the lines of flux, this is what happens. So the motion is going up. The flux is going that way because that's how we set up our magnets. Now, this finger, the third finger, is pointing toward us. That means the electrons at this point are flowing toward the tape here. In this side, on the left right side, things are a little similar as far as flux, but the motion, which is this finger, is going down. That means that the third finger that we cannot see is pointing away. Electrons at this point are going away, and in here they are returning. What that means for the tape, for the piece that had the tape that, has, that was receiving electrons, now when it gets to the right side, it's going down. So if we apply back again, the motion going down, the flux in the same direction of the magnets, how it's supposed to be, still though, now we find out that electrons are going away from the tape. So at this point on, the tape is negative, and the piece without the, the tape is positive. Back over here, the tape, electrons will be going toward the tape, so that the tape will be positive. What I'm trying to tell you is that constantly, it's, it's like having a... Uh, a DC source over there that is constantly flipping and giving power, giving, um, uh, causing electrons to change directions within each um, wire. At this point over here uh, is when we call that it is, it, that is the, the point where elect electrons, or rather the flux or the magnets is being cut the least amount. When that happens, there is zero curving flow. At that point on, coffee starts flowing a little bit harder, and at that is the peak point. This is when uh, we have what is called the peak-to-peak -peak or maximum amount of, of current, or maximum amount of voltage, and then it starts fading away until you get point to zero, and so on and so forth. And this is where it reverse, and now the process continues on and on and on. Let's talk about this peak voltage. So the arrow right now is pointing to what is called the positive peak and the new arrow is pointing to the negative peak. Those are the highest and lowest voltages that the sine wave will ever reach. So this leads to a new topic called peak to peak. For example, in a house peak to peak it is said to be from minus 170 volts to positive 170 volts. But in houses, we say that the voltage, it is 120 volts. What are they talking about? If you look to the right, I'm going to uh, darken in brown the parts where the voltage never reaches 170 volts, but is any other voltage including zero. Let me explain this with the light. If you see where the red arrows are pointing to, at those moments, there is no current flow. So that means that the light bulb is actually off. Yes, that's right. What I'm trying to tell you is that the light bulb, it is flickering very, very fast. You actually cannot see it, but according to the light bulb, what's happening is that the light is off, and then it gets a little bit uh, bright, and then gets more current, which makes it brighter, eventually it reaches a high bright point, and then it starts the, uh, going, uh, uh, turning off slowly to, uh, to zero, current flow of reverses, and so on and so forth. So, at the end, what I can say is that the light is not working 100%. The light is working at somewhere between a magic number of 70.7%. So if I put a battery that has 120 volts to that light, the light will work to the maximum. At that point on, there is no fluctuation of power. If I use an AC signal, I need to use an AC signal that has 170 volts peak to peak so that it compensates for all of those times that the light bulb is going to be off so that the light bulb 
works as hard as much as it when it was working with the DC battery that had a source of 120 volts. So yes, what I just said is that 170 volt peak to peak AC signal causes the same amount of work that a DC battery with a lesser voltage. In that case, 70.7% less of a voltage. So with that, that's our magic number. If you use 170 volts like I did here and I multiply it by 7.07, .07, I get 120 volts, which is roughly what the multimeter will show you when you stick it into this wall outlet. That is what's called the Voon mean square of the AC way. Um, if uh, the multimeter gives you a particular voltage uh, when you are actually troubleshooting and if you want to find out what the peak to peak it is, all you have to do is multiply the, the voltage of the multimeter gives you, which is once again the room mean squared, by 1.41 and that's how you get the peak to peak voltage. To be clear, the point that I wanted to make about inductors and conductors is that when you put current through them, they create magnetic fields. But on the other hand, if you take a conductor that is not energized and you move it really fast through a magnetic field, current flow will be created within the conductor. I told you that if you pass a conductor through a magnetic field really fast, it will create current flow through the conductor. Now, I take in this conductor and I shape it in this funny way and what I want to introduce you right now is something called coils. And so I shape the a conductor as a coil. And now um, if I were to touch it in these uh, two polarities over here, I'm not going to do that because this is a very simple inductor. This is only for education purposes to illustrate an idea. And the idea is that if I put it in the poles, electrons will naturally flow from the negative side and they will have to be forced to go round and round like my finger is showing and eventually make it to the positive side. Now, when that is happening, inductors, uh, as electrons flow through it, now they create a magnetic field because electrons are flowing through the center of it. And if you wrap it around the fingers in the direction of current flow, this finger will be pointing to whatever the north pole of that magnetic field is. Therefore, this will be the south pole. If I were to flip the battery around, and if I were to touch it, now the negative side is in here. So electrons will be flowing in this motion, round it, round it, down that way. Now I'll have to wrap around my fingers in the opposite direction because that's how electrons will flow. Now the North Pole will be here. I'm going to show you a graphic uh, that represents the same idea. So this, remember, is called uh, the left-hand rule for uh, conductors.